Good evening everybody and welcome back to Welcome Grove Homestead. So I did a thing and I forgot to put my camera on while I did the thing. So sorry. Um, we have started winterizing our goat barn um, because poor Miss Mayhem this morning was so cold during milking that she didn't want her grain. She just wanted to stand there and shiver. So. I was like, okay, it is time to winterize like right now. So we actually have a local source here where we can get uh, train tarps. So they're, they're tarps that are put over train cargo loads basically to protect them. Hi, Nestle, bumping my camera. Uh, so we're able to get those pretty inexpensively. And so that's what we've decided to use to winterize our barns. So here's our first tarp. We're not quite finished with it yet, but light's fading and it's time to milk. So we just got it tacked up, but there is already a significant difference in how warm it is in there. And I also laid down some bedding in here. Fluffy, warm, keep the girls warm at night. And Maggie is in lockup over there because we just fed the dogs and she'll eat the dog food. So she goes in timeout while the dogs get their dinner. One of the things that really drew us to using these tarps is that when we go in the barn, <sighs> It's still light in here. It's not super dark like it would be with a regular solid tarp. So we get the weatherproofing um, and we still also get light in here. So we are also going to be continuing this tarping all the way down in front of the hay as well to really help with that side breeze that comes in. And that's gonna really make this place a lot warmer. Now, obviously there's still a big gap at the bottom but just having the top covered up, like you can feel a temperature difference in here. And actually when we were working on it, all the goats were all bedded down in here. They were chewing their cud and living the good life in the warmer barn. Okay, so now I gotta get my milking done and uh, it's probably gonna be too late or too dark by, that t by the time that finishes. So we'll probably do more tomorrow. One rather exciting development is that we have two rabbits that are due to kindle this weekend, hoping that they both kindle. Guinevere, on the end over there, is due on Friday. Today is Tuesday. So she's got her nest box for her to start building her nest and she's already going to work. But Miss Elaine here is due on Saturday with her very first litter, I hope. I hope that she has her first litter. She's a little bit of a chunky bunny. So, um, hoping that she got pregnant. If she didn't, then it is what it is. We'll try again when she's lost a little bit more weight. But, uh, since I was already breeding Guinevere, it's a good idea to try and breed two does at the same time, just in case you need to foster anybody. And Nimue has been dealing with her foot issues, so I wasn't gonna breed her. So, Elaine was up to bat. So we're gonna see this weekend if she actually has her very first babies. <gasps> now let's do the milking. <laughs> Hello everybody, it is now the next day. Nice and bright and sunny and beautiful. Semi-warm, it was not even remotely semi-warm this morning. It was like 37 degrees when I came outside to milk. It was cold. Oh my gosh, I am not used to this kind of cold at this time of year because it's the beginning of October and in California where we came from, it's still like in the 80s and 90s and it was really cold this morning. So one project is that I have got to switch over some wardrobe stuff because I'm like layering up. It's like, where's all my winter stuff? Anyway, the goats did great in their tarped area. Came out this morning, nobody was shivering or excessively cold. They were perky, like they, there's a noticeable difference for these girls already in the enclosed area. Now, the Nigerians are being locked up inside of the lockup pen at night over here. Uh, that is mostly just because before I had this tarp up, that was how they stayed warm was I put them in there. They had more insulation, they had bedding and it, um, 
it just kept them warmer. And because the turkeys, the two Narragansett turkeys that we let out during the day, they go in there at night and the big goats will actually kind of smush the turkeys to get to their feed. So here, I'll show you. Whoop. Excuse me, Arwen, I'm tripping over a goat. So inside the lockup pen, I put this cattle panel across here. So the Nigerians actually can't reach this red bucket here has the turkey feed in it. It's actually usually down here when we have the Nigerians in here because they can't push that cattle panel hard enough to eat from that red pan if it's in the corner. However, the big goats can push with all their weight and they can push that whole cattle panel back far enough to eat out of that bucket. So in the interest of not squishing the turkeys when they're in there, we keep the big goats out of this pen. The reason that feeder is up in the corner right now is because Maggie goes in the lockup when the dogs are being fed because she'll eat their food. So we just put it up there and she doesn't even try to push on the cattle panel because she knows she can't reach it. Hey little goats. These little babies are getting so big. I just weighed them and they already weigh 30 pounds. Big girls. Now if they are able to grow another 10 pounds in the next month, they could potentially be bred this fall. I'm not holding my breath that they'll gain that much weight in a month, but you never know. Hi, sweetheart. Now, on another note, we do have a turkey update. So, we recently posted a video saying that Caleb was going to sell one of his Narragansett turkeys. That plan has changed just a little bit. When we were getting ready to move out here, Caleb said that he wanted to raise turkeys. We spent some time, we went over catalogs, we chose the breed. Caleb wanted to raise Narragansett turkeys. Now we have Narragansetts. We have two Toms. And we also have these artisan gold turkeys behind me. And we've had to talk, discuss, figure out what we want to do. And honestly, the, what are you doing? The turkey is checking out my, my camera. <laughs> He really, really likes that screen. Hi. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, so we have these uh, artisan gold turkeys. You may not have that. <laughs> the artisan gold turkeys that we have were actually replacement birds for uh, three of our first batch of Narragansetts that didn't make it. They died when they were little. And um, we got them from Rural King and they were the replacement birds basically they say you know they died within the first week this is what we have and this is how we'll make it right we're going to replace your turkeys but they didn't have any more narragansett so we have these black turkeys we had three but one of them was killed by a raccoon so we now have a pair we have a tom and a hen or i guess technically he's a jake because he's an immature tom but he's a male so i'm just going to call him a tom Hi, Nestle. I'm crouching here, so the goats have decided to come over and make their presence known. Anyway, um, so basically it comes down to the fact that we just are not currently able to maintain multiple pens of turkeys uh, to keep breeds from mixing. And so I think that, or we, have made the decision to go ahead and sell the artisan gold turkeys as a pair. And the Narragansetts, we need to hold on to Gansett for just a little bit because it really stresses them out when you keep them alone. Uh, we've noticed that there was a lot of pacing and kind of panicking when they were alone in the pen. And so we kind of have decided to hold on to Gansett until the new hens are mature enough to be housed with Nara, who is our breeding Tom. And so they're, he's gonna stay to keep Nara company until those girls grow up enough to be housed with him. Because right now they're just too little and I can, I'm worried for their safety. So it's all sorts of complicated and convoluted and crazy. Today, the artisan gold turkeys are going to be picked up by their new owners, and we are going to say goodbye to them. Now, Caleb has been very mature. Uh, 
he helped us come up with the with the decision or he he's okay with it um, and because he put in all of the time and the work uh, he hand raised these turkeys they're very friendly so he is going to be receiving all of the money that we do get from selling the turkeys so that helps cushion the blow a little bit but so yeah we're going to be saying goodbye to Arda and Gold the turkeys but they should be going on to a good new home the new owners are pretty excited to get them so you ever get the feeling that the animals just <laughs> really invade your personal space these two are funny they have been making friends and I think Nestle wants to be friends more than Jane does. <laughs> the other day Jane was laying on the ground and Nestle wanted to lay down next to her. She starts to lay down and Jane was like, nope, and jumped up and ran off. <laughs> but today Miss Nestle is in heat, so she's yelling to all the boys. Jane is wagging her tail a lot, so she's giving a signal that she might be in heat, but I know that she just had a really strong heat, like last week. So I'm not really sure what's going on with her because she before like last week she yelled for three days tail wagging slobbering like she was a mess and now she's wagging and she and Nestle are keeping each other company as the lovelorn females wanting the, the boys to come over and hang out so they commiserate together that there's no boys over here all right guys it is a bit later in the day the turkeys have been picked up and we are working on some more uh, winterizing over in the goat barn. We are going to get some of the hay storage covered up so that that doesn't get wet. Helps cut down on the wind that comes in and bothers the goats. It's going to be fantastico. So first of all, we got to get this tarp cut to the measurement that we need, which for the two sections in our barn that has hay in it, it's going to be about 25 feet long. So we're going to cut this thing to be about 25 feet long. And we're going to do 20 feet wide so that we can double it up and make it come down about 10 feet. And that will help really cut down on wind and moisture that's going to be getting on that hay that's close to the edge. Well, it's up. We had a couple of harrowing experiences there. It's an eight foot ladder that I was on top of and the ground isn't totally level. It's kind of hard to show in the video, but basically this end over here is a little bit higher. And as you're far getting farther down the barn, the ground is sloping down just a little bit, but you know, the top of the barn, it's level. so. You're having to get a little bit higher on the ladder as you go. So toward this end, as I'm working on it, uh, I put a screw in and then it must have disturbed a carpenter bee who was in his hole. And I swear there was no wind up sound. I mean, you know, at least with a carpenter bee, they're loud enough, you can hear them. You know, this thing was like right there, right next to my face. I'm on like the top step of the ladder. And it's also a little close, so I'm just leaning just a tiny bit back. <laughs> it buzzed me. I was like, oh, I thought I, I thought that today was the day that I was gonna meet Jesus, guys. It was <laughs> I was gonna fall off that ladder and die. But I didn't. I lived and the tarp is up and we're good for the night. We've got some other modifications that we wanna make to it. Uh, to make it so that we can easily raise and lower this tarp from when we need to get to the hay because it's so big you have to use a tractor to move it. So we're still working out a few of those things but because we still have grass and we have plenty of hay in other locations that we can pull from if we need to, we have a little bit of time that we can kind of figure it out. But we have an idea, we just need to implement it. 
Well, it certainly was a very eventful day today getting those tarps up, getting our first turkeys sold. Caleb did fantastic. He uh, met with the buyer and he helped load them up and he's doing pretty good. He, he says he misses them some, but overall he's doing pretty good about selling his artisan gold turkeys. Now coming up this weekend for us, we're going to be butchering our smaller flock of our meat chickens, the 13 that we have, as well as the seven meat rabbits that we have in the tractor. We're gonna go ahead and just do one whole big thing over the weekend. And we've got some other butchering projects we're gonna do, but I'm gonna tell you guys about that one in our next video. As always, this is your country nerd with a goat herd saying that you can grow where you're planted.